but the ones who eat this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. There is yet more light and truth to break through from these words. Rabbi Mark was well loved in the little town of Klanus Techel in Russia. A group of Jews had fled there and set up the little synagogue and they loved Rabbi Mark. They used to go to Rabbi Mark and say, Rabbi, nobody has troubles like I've got troubles, but nobody. And one by one they came and they shared their troubles with Rabbi Mark until he thought he's got to do something about this. So he called the early morning gathering together and said, Tonight at the service, I have an announcement to make. Well, that night, the synagogue was crowded, wondering what this announcement would be about. He said, I know I preached the sermon that God would help us with our troubles and our burdens. He said, but I prayed about it, and in a dream I found the answer. He said, this coming week, I want you to get your petrol, your peckle of, of troubles, a bag, a sack. I want you to write on a piece of stone all your troubles and your worries and put it into the sack, into the peckle. And I want you to bring them and put them at my door. And then over the weekend... You will be free of your troubles and your worries. You will have a worry-free weekend. And then on Monday morning you can come back and you can check and pick up whatever sack or peckle you want to. You can choose which one you pick up. So the week went by and the people wrote on pieces of stone their worries and their troubles and they put them in their peckle and they took them to the rabbi's door and they left them there. On Monday morning... He peeped out through the window and saw the people coming and checking the weight of each pe peckle. And one by one, they took their own peckle home. And Rabbi Mark went and had his breakfast. I wonder how you see Jesus. Is Jesus the Mr. Fix-It? that you just bring your troubles to and they'll all go away. Well, I wonder, in this series of, of uh, lessons on the gospel according to John and the Jesus story about the bread, and you may remember that last, uh, last Sunday, uh, Bob said, uh, we're coming near the end of this series on Jesus talking about himself as the bread. And he talked about Jesus being the real thing and Jenny, a week or so ago, gave the wonderful sermon about the feeding of the 5,000 and how people were satisfied. They followed Jesus. 
and whether they're following Jesus because he can fix things for them. And Bob said, we're coming to the end of this series and David will be taking the last one next week. Good luck. (laughs) Well, I think that was almost prophetic. This is a very difficult text and I don't actually understand it. All I understand is right at the end, Jesus says, will you also go away? And they say, no, we are staying with you. I wonder if there's shades of this week in there somewhere. Uh huh. Well, who knows? Did they have a meeting? The disciples, what is, what, what's he talking about? Did they form the very first gateways group to discuss what Jesus had just said to them? Well, Rabbi Mark, he had a group of elders. He loved the elders. They used to meet after the synagogue service and discuss matters of great importance and solve problems. And this one one Sabbath, they were about to hold the meeting and they were one short. They should have ten for the meeting. There were only nine there. They were waiting for old Fivol, and Fivol was always running late. Well, when he turned up, he was soaked to the skin. But he was carrying an umbrella. And they said, Fivol, how come you're wet? He said... My umbrella is old and it's full of holes. But then why did you bring your umbrella? I didn't think it was going to rain. (laughs) The wisdom of old age. Anyway, they were there having their meeting and the matter came up of the poor box. The poor box had been stolen. And what are they going to do about it? They stroked their beards and they said, I know, we will affix the poor box to the ceiling and then the thieves won't be able to get at it. Well, how are the faithful and the charitable going to get to the poor box to put money in? Hmm. I know we'll get a ladder and we'll put the ladder there so the charitable can go up and put their money in the poor box. Mm. but that might not be safe. Oh, well then we'll put in a really good ladder with a handrail. And Rabbi Mark thought, I wonder if I should point out something to them. Well, the wisdom of the elders. What did the disciples discuss after this passage that we've heard about eating his flesh and and getting eternal life. Well, what was it? What's that all about? Well, there's a truth there that the disciples needed to go on examining. Jesus, we learned something at Gateways the other night. Jesus was a border walker. He walked the edge. He walked very much subversively against the regime welcoming those who were not welcome, giving a place at the table for those who were excluded. That's the Jesus that's talking now with this strange language. It's in John, don't forget. Matthew, Mark and Luke have lots of stories that Jesus told that are called parables. And they may be a little bit easier to understand than this sort of straight talk. Although some commentators have suggested that John actually is a kind of a parable. Now I've got one more story from, well it's actually these are stories from David Kossoff. David Kossoff is a Jewish actor, or was a Jewish actor, and uh, I have a number of books by him, but he actually came to Adelaide. I I went and heard him at the University of Adelaide a long time ago. And this story I think is... helps me to understand a bit more about the text. Mark was wanting uh, to get away, like, a, like Bob sometimes goes away to, to, refer, you know, to get more fr- uh, 
ideas and to refresh and so on and so forth. And ministers are asked to do that. Well, Rabbi Mark was similar. He, he needed to get away. And he decided to go to Moscow to see his old teacher. And he, uh, he met with his old teacher and they had a cup of tea. I mean, his old teacher was his hero. And Mark was one of his favourite students. So they had a great time having a cup of tea. And then the old teacher said, I want to tell you a parable. Now, Rabbi Mark wasn't used to parables such as in the New Testament. He knew a few in the Old Testament, but he, he was ready to listen. He said, I want to tell you a parable about parable and truth. They were twins, twin brothers. Parable was flamboyant, wore beautiful costumes. But truth, truth ran around naked. And nobody liked naked truth. <laughs> they grew up and grew apart. People loved to parable wherever he went. He got a crowd gathering around. They loved his, his appearance, his flamboyance, if that's a word. But truth, he wasn't welcome at all. People shunned him. Until I met up as, as grown men. And Parable said, truth, what, what's the matter? You look so forlorn and downhearted. He said, people avoid me. People don't want to have anything to do with me. And Parable said, well, we are twins and we look alike. Why don't we kind of come together? And I can give you some of my colourfulness. And they did. So truth and Parable became one. Now, if that's the case with John, that it's a kind of parable, then we need to look at how it ends in this story today. And will you also go away from me? Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And maybe that's not somewhere in the future, but now, that we have the words of eternal life, the words that make a difference to the way we live because we've received the word of Jesus. It's not as if we understand fully. It's not as if we have to know all there is to know about Jesus, but sufficient to know that Jesus is the one to follow the words that make a difference to the way we live and I reckon that's good news